Hey, welcome back to Comic Book News. You know, they say it's always darkest before the dawn. The dawn of X, that is. Today, we're going to talk about uh, an all-new era in the X-Men, and it starts with X-Men number one by Jonathan Hickman and Lanel Yu. Uh, but is this the uh, era of the X-Men that we remember, where the X-Men just wanted to fight uh, for acceptance with humanity? Or is something new and sinister going on in this new world of Krakoa and mutant society. Well, these are some of the themes that we'll examine in X-Men and the other Dawn of X books today on Comic Book News. Hey, welcome back to Comic Book News. I'm Dan Shaheen. Today, uh, we're going to talk about X-Men number one. And uh, if we could sum up this new era of X-Men, that's been launched by House of X and Dawn of X. Uh, I think the two themes that I'm going for here are uh, decompressed, no, not decompressed, recompressed storytelling and world building, right? That's what Hickman is doing here. He's building a whole new set of core concepts to base the entire uh, world and universe of the X-Men around. And how they fit in with the Marvel Universe has changed. How they interact with each other has changed. It's a whole new day. It's a whole new dawn. It's the dawn of X, right? So um, that's what we're going to talk about today. And and you know what? Why are we jawboning when we've got a million dollar comic book cam? Let's dive straight in, shall we? X-Men number one by Jonathan Hickman uh, and uh, Lanel Francis Yu. This is one of the most exciting uh, teams on X-Men for a long time. I, I, I enjoyed Pepe Larraz and the rest of the House of X, uh, Powers of X team. But uh, you, Lionel, you, Lionel, 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 you, um, is, is just, he's a solid veteran at this point. He's a great choice to go with Hickman. Um, and we get to see some really cool stuff. So we dive right in. And, and I think... Um, we're opening here. It looks like to be maybe a flashback, or uh, uh, perhaps this is. Um, no, I'm sorry. It's not a flashback. It, it is a flashback, but it's basically now that um, uh, Cyclops was resurrected after dying on their mission to outer space. Um, now the uh, professor is he, is setting him up with his glasses again, right? Because. They have all the same flaws that they had. You would think that maybe a clone of Cyclops wouldn't have, would be able to control his eye blasts, but maybe it's because his essence is restored and essentially that weakness is not just a biological thing, but perhaps it's psychological. Um, or maybe there's some other reason. But for whatever, Wolverine gets his, his uh, Atlantium back and uh, Cyclops can't control his blasts without Ruby Quartz. So that's fine. So here we go. X-Men number one, Pax Krakoa. And uh, we begin with the X-Men hunting down the last remaining Orcus stronghold. Right? Orcus, if you don't remember, was the organization comprised of X like S.H.I.E.L.D. and Hammer and Hydra and all the different sort of human um, uh, scientific military organizations banding together to be humanity's last bulwark against uh, the, the mutants, right? To protect humanity's um, place in the universe against this next wave of evolution. This really ties into one of the major themes of the X-Men book, the new X-Men paradigm um, that I want to go into. So anyway, we get a, a nice straightforward action scenes. What you're going to notice, a couple things you might notice. One... I read an interview with Hickman where he talked about um, the lettering for the book. Now, if you'll notice, as opposed to a lot of comics, a lot of Marvel comics, we're using upper and lowercase letters. You might not have even noticed that or th thought about it. Hickman gave his reasoning as he wants, you can fit more words in a balloon this way, right? He's going back to, again, recompress the story down to give us some, some, some reading value to feel like some meat when you're done reading a comic if you're going to spend 4.99 on this comic or on any comic for that matter you want to have more than five minutes worth of reading uh, of the uh, like one sixth of a graph 
graphic novel or whatever chapter. You want you need more, and you're getting it, and it's going to start to deliver here with the X Men. Um, again, we get some nice few pages of real action sequence, real characterization, dialogue, uh, uh, an idea about um, you know how how they feel and how they interact. So one thing that I thought was pretty interesting here is where um, uh, Storm warns Cyclops says, so be careful, Cyclops. If you look close enough, you can see the desperation in their eyes. Suicide bombs and serving the greater good are always the last refuge of a conquered people. You know, read that into whatever political situation you will. Um, but it shows some insights, some insights that Hickman has shown being able to look at... Uh, things from more than just a good versus evil standpoint that each side has its own competing set of motivations and I like that kind of grayness and ambiguity in my writing and in my comics so we move on and we get to see uh, after the initial breach of the center they bring in the big guns Magneto and Polaris sure looks like Polaris is like working hand in hand with Magneto Pol Magneto sort of like giving her orders to to sort of, would you please take care of this riffraff? I don't want it to even be around me. Polaris is like clearing the way for Magneto, um, who comes in and, and takes care of business, right? They're going to stop this base and, and, and um, finish this threat of post-humanity, right? Because that's where, we're, where we've gotten to this point, is, is, is that we found out in the last issue of um, Powers of X that Really, the threat against humanity is not the machines. It's not the machine-human alliance. It's the humans, right? The machines are a distraction. The truth is, if you want to look at the themes here, it's man versus nature. In essence, that humanity wants to shortcut nature by using technology, and the X-Men represent the next like step in the natural evolution of mankind. So... Uh, it's a it, it's technology versus nature, and hence the organic nature of Krakoa versus the very mechanical and machine like nature of humanity. Nice themes, I like it. One of those. Speaking of which, here's Storm activating her Krakoan flower, which acts as a transport back to Krakoa. Right? They have these gateways, these flowers. If you grow the flower, it becomes a gateway back to Krakoa, and it doesn't matter uh, where this gateway is, anywhere on the planet, or even off planet as we're going to find out so um we, we get to where uh they've they've found the base and they found a bunch of stasis containers and they freed a bunch of uh, uh kids essentially from there a bunch of mutants and someone who's not a mutant this character seems to be like an evolutionary post-human type not an x-man or not a mutant but like on this road to post-humanity and um, she actually manages to escape and disappear. I'm sure we're going to see more uh, out of that character. Speaking of characters we're going to see more of, we get introduced to some mutants I don't, that we've never seen before. As far as I know, I don't. I think these are all new characters. We don't get any names or or exact really like descriptions of their powers, but we got all kinds of funky looking mutants here, and 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 we'll get a little closer glimpse at some of them. You know, as they bring them back to Krakoa through the flower portal we get to see a few of them and you know they're like kids and they want to make sure they're safe and that they're get counseling and everything else um storm is a little bit worried about crazy energy readings coming off of these two so that's all we're hearing a little bit of tease maybe these will be uh maybe these characters will become some of the new mutants in the new mutants book i, I this is that's my guess is that we're getting set up for that um and then next we get to see something that's kind of nice but also foreshadowing maybe and foreboding a little bit is that um you know magneto has assumed this sort of like grandfatherly role and so when he returns back they're like oh magneto magneto tell us about how you defeated uh the the base tell us how you freed the mutants and like he's drinking this in and loving it like magneto loves that kind of worship especially from his own people and now he's like on the island of mutants and he can become this sort of like elder statesman of mutants maybe that he always wanted to be or felt he should be um and we get to see more from polaris who i think is going to become more of a key player I've, I've always liked i've always liked polaris um and we get to hear and then the next part goes into cyclops and this issue is really about cyclops and cyclops's family a little bit we get to see the house of summer 
So here's Cyclops talking about how he's got a family, he's got a kid, and that changed his life, and he loves it, and 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 you know he really believes in in this new mutant cause. Next, cut to uh, the Orcus Forge. Right, this was the base where they were building, trying to build that uh, next Nimrod, or trying to do the dawn of Nimrod, and the base still exist they lost the master mold into the sun but the base is still orbiting the sun right and here who do we have here but director devo who i don't know if we've seen before or not or if this is a new character i've never heard of him before the name is pretty freaky pretty pretty tweaky i guess uh, are we not men we are devo uh and he's got these weird this weird thing hickman seems to like helmets and face things and i guess he's blind but he can see in the electromagnetic spectrum and all kinds of other ways. So he's the director of Orcus. And uh, who have we got here but Karima still, the Omega level um, Sentinel, who's supposed to be like the trigger to the to Nimrod. And he's like, you know, we still got you and your key to our whole plan, um, but we lost, you know, the doctor, the guy who blew up the base. What was his name? Dr. Gregor. His wife is still around, but he was like a key... Uh, military leader as well as scientific leader and like inspirational guy so he's a big loss to Orcus but now that they've lost that last remaining stronghold they lost most a, a lot of their info right so they're losing and they're losing this battle they're getting desperate um, moving on okay now we move into the house of summers so we reveal that Cyclops has always wanted a view so he and he could put his house Right, because of the Krakoan flowers, he can build his house anywhere he wants. And he decides, let's build it somewhere with the best view possible. He builds it on the moon. And in fact, it seems like it's in the blue area of the moon, which is, I believe, where Black Bolt and the Inhumans lived. And I think there's an atmosphere there so they can probably walk around and stuff. Um, either way, he's got a house on the moon with a view of the Earth, and that's pretty sweet. And here, the next few pages, we get to see like a Summers family reunion. Scott Summers and, and, and family. Here we've got uh, uh, Vulcan, right? Their brother Gabriel, who's like raised, he was like raised without the family. So he's kind of a weirdo and he's treated that way. Like he gets to run the barbecue because he has the energy manipulation abilities. And uh, Wolverine, who also lives in Scott's house along with some other mutants, and we'll get into that, who else is living there, um, you know, wants a steak rare, but Vulcan is like con temperature control freak and like, I'll give it to you medium rare. I don't know. It's trying to be funny and it kind of succeeded to me. Um, next we get, I forget what this star jammer guy's name is, but we get to see him talking to like young cable. I don't know when this happened that we got like the boy cable, but I guess this is Nathan Summers, Gene Gray and Scott's son. And, uh, but he's treated like a G whiz kind of kid who loves guns. And, and I don't know, pretty funny. I like it when Hickman's goofy and funny because he mixes that with these super serious moments with these like really goofy human moments. And I don't know, that makes for a fun comics reading experience. And it really works with like the X-Men because if you remember the X-Men from back in the day, they were always like having softball games and stuff and like interacting as like a family and a group. Now they're so huge that they're sort of split up into these clans. And this is the Summers clan is like, like you know, core old school X-Men. Um, anyway, we get a lot of banter between them. We get a lot of talk. We get to see Havoc is there. We get to see the Star Jammers are visiting from outer space, and, and they're given one of these Krakoan flowers. So now the Star Jammers have an instant link and can be back on Earth at any moment. Cool for future storytelling, right? Next, we get a nice little extra bonus piece, right? This is what describes... The geometry, how the Summer's house on the moon is set up, a little description of blue area. Whose bedrooms are there? And we get to see everybody who's living there. So Cyclops, Wolverine, Jean, Vulcan, Havoc, Cable, and Rachel all share a house together. It's like the mutant real world or something, or Big Brother or whatever. And then they've got some extra empty rooms for, for visitors and guests and stuff. And then, you know, they got their hangar for their vehicles. They got their cocoa and garden. They got... You know, this is a throwback to the old days when they would give you diagrams and little extra things. This is no, like, this just aids in the feeling of reality and completeness in the story. It adds a little extra that's, like, something worth reading. It's not just some stupid hype blurb. It's a little something that lends and adds to the story and goes back to our theme of world building, 
right? So we're building out this world and we get little details like this. Like you don't wash dishes on Krakoa. You squirt this weird enzyme on that eats all the crap off your dishes. And like, Corsair thinks that's a little weird, but like, you know, he goes, well, you should have seen the old version when it would, Krakoa was trying to grow its dishes for us. And like cool sci-fi details, stuff that we don't need. And in the old way of writing, you don't, you don't have this room in decompressed storytelling to have these long conversations with jokes and meandering dialogue. And that's back, all right? That's what's back with recompressed storytelling. Anyway, back to the Orcus Forge where we find, where we get to see uh, Dr. Gregor's wife, the other Dr. Gregor, speaking to, doc, to Director Devo. And basically the gist of it is, you know, they're talking about his husband and what a great loss he was, et cetera, et cetera. And she makes the big reveal. Spoiler alert, I guess. It's not that big a deal. She says, I know how to bring him back. So have they figured out resurrection on their own? Can they bring back some certain bits of humanity or, or, or what? I'm not sure. Uh, next, we see the reading order of what's coming. What's coming soon. All the books coming out, man. X-Men, Marauders, Excalibur, New Mutants, X-Force, Fallen Angels. Uh, all coming soon. I'll be reviewing at least... I'll be buying and reviewing at least the number one of all these issues. Don't you worry. Um, and finally, what's next? Araco. A-R-A-K-K-O. Araco. And uh, this is... Uh, 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 an anagram for Krakoa, right? And it's the other island. Is this where, I believe, where maybe Apocalypse's four horsemen um, are entombed? Perhaps there was an ancient war between Krakoa and Arako, or the, I, originally it was one island and it split off, so we're going to get to see the sort of like uh, darker side of Krakoa. I think that's great. Um, speaking of great really really loving uh all of the uh support we're getting on this channel i really appreciate it um been having a great time talking about x-men and talking about just comics of all types and uh, uh i'm especially enjoying the interaction between fans on on the comments down below so you know if you've got some thoughts make sure to leave a comment Make sure, if you're not, to subscribe and uh, hit that bell if you want notifications and new videos. Most of all, hey, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.